Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Morning Prayer. the God that heals us. His name is more powerful than cancer, heart disease, or any disease you can name. Whatever your need, he's here to heal you. Let's confess him as our healer as we sing, you are the God that healeth me. You are the God that healeth me. That healeth me. Oh, you are the Lord, my you healer. Are the Lord, my healer. You sent Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, 
but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 30 and 32. Psalm 30 I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Psalm 32 Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in the time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Do not be like horse or mule which have no understanding, 
which must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of the Lord, written in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 16 to 28. Then the king gave the command, and Daniel was brought and thrown into the den of lions. And the king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you faithfully serve, deliver you. The stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, so that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, and spent the night fasting. No food was brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then, at break of day, the king got up and hurried to the den of lions. When he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out anxiously to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you faithfully serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel then said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, so that they would not hurt me, because I was found blameless before him, and also before you, O king, I have done no wrong. Then the king was exceedingly glad, and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. The king gave a command, and those who had accused Daniel were brought and thrown into the den of lions. They, their children, and their wives. Before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples and nations of every language throughout the whole world. May you have abundant prosperity. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion people should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion has no end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth for he has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant, David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God written in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 5, verses 27 to 39. After this, 
Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to their sect, complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor. But the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. They said to him, John's disciple often fast and pray. So do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for they say the old is better. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At Cancer Society, we would say early detection is the best prevention. And that was just the thought came to my head there. I'm thinking that I mean, I don't want to talk about the Pharisees. We understand the Pharisees. The Pharisees and they, and, and we understand that we too can act like the Pharisees um, and why we're not going anywhere because the Pharisees were busy just trying to shut Jesus down. They were trying to find fault with him in everything that they did. They were there on the negative rather than trying to help him, help them, rather than trying to help him to help the people but they were worried about the position they will lose they were worried about the money they would lose they were worried about the power that they had over others i mean and a lot of us were very much guilty of that and so they were there they were the naysayers and everything and they were pointing at everything and picking at everything he did and so they're there telling him how could you sit with sinners and jesus says the doctor is for the sick. The doctor is for the sick. Not for those who are well, but for the sick. But we have to consider, even in our regular living, do we even know sometimes when we're sick? By the time symptoms come out and blaring its horn at us, and I have to say blaring its horn because we, we tend to shy away from going to the doctor. We avoid the doctor, we avoid medicine, especially in the Caribbean, we turn to what we call natural remedies. And, oh, bush, yes, bush medicine, with no measurement, with no person who has studied it to say, but just what uh, on here say so. Take this, that will help that. Take that, that will help that. And we could find ourselves in a lot of complications, just grabbing and reaching from all sorts of corners for a quick fix. Consider that and consider the hospital, the clinics, and all sorts of other medical um, things that are there for us to engage in to make sure that we remain healthy. Far less to talk about eating properly and dieting. 
But the, the, the point is if we look at how we treat ourselves in a physical sense, a physical that we know, the physical that we like to hold on to, this worldly side of things that we are always chasing behind. If we treat ourselves so badly, then what is happening in our spiritual selves? And if we understand that when we get sick, by the time we get a symptom, we've already been, we're already sick. It's just our body telling us we're infected. Our body is telling us that, hello, listen. By the time we get there, it's, the symptom is not saying you're now getting sick. The some symptom is saying that something is wrong. It means that we don't know when we were infected. We don't know when we started, when the sickness started. And if we consider that and what Jesus is saying, Jesus is not picking and choosing people, but helping us or pushing us to understand that he came for everyone. He's present for everybody because you don't know that you're sick. You don't know when you got sick. Later, some symptoms will show you that something is wrong. And if we consider our symptoms, the sin, that negative attitude, that's a symptom of being sick. And the sickness is being sinful because the negativity is not of God. The hurt and pain that we spew to each other, that is not of God. He calls us to love. He calls us to care. He calls us to share. The greed, the envy, the lust, the... We know the list of sins. Look it up. Jealousy, the, the, the murder, the theft, the wanting what is not yours, the hoarding, the selfishness rather than selflessness. Those are the symptoms of us being sick. And if we understood that we are not well, then we recognize we need the great physician. And I'm not just looking at, yes, Christ was there and he healed persons physically. And he wants to heal all of us spiritually more than physically because that is what matters most. Our connection to him, our relationship with him, our walk with him. And so he says, he is not just there to save because the Pharisees, I told you I didn't want to talk about the Pharisees. But the Pharisees felt that they were okay and they were right. And so they were sitting in high chairs, high seats, and only certain people could come there. And so if Jesus is there to save, he's there to save those who are okay. But Jesus is saying, the fact that you can think that you are okay means you're not okay. And therefore, I'm here for you too. Jesus is here for all of us. Again, not knowing when you got sick. You go to a doctor visit sometimes just to say, you know, I came to do my yearly checkup. We do yearly checkups up. We do yearly checkup, don't we? The medical, the yearly medical, the fitness test, the run, the blood work. We do it for work, for personal reasons. We do it. We get it done to make sure that all is well and remains well and so even if we're not in that sick bed position we still have to do our checks to make sure that we don't get there we still have to keep abreast of things to make sure that we deal with the issues that might be cropping up early because it's easy for us to slip and stray from god that's the sickness he's talking about sinfulness straying away from him and acting in a way that does not give him glory, that does not showcase him as being our God, that does not point to him. That's the healing we're talking about today. He's there to heal us physical, physically. He has the power to do that. But he wants us to be healed totally from our sin so that we will be saved. That's the criteria of living with him. That's the criteria of that eternal life. That's the criteria of being one with him. That's the criteria of journeying with him and experiencing all that he has to offer. 
by allowing him to heal us. Checking in and dealing with each issue to the core. Treating symptoms, yes, but getting to the core. And he, being the great physician, is the one that will diagnose, look into our issues, and prescribe or treat the things that are wrong in us. We lack love, and that's the core issue. The symptoms come out in words, the symptoms come out in selfishness, the symptoms come out in greed, the symptoms come out in us not taking care of each other. And so we deal with the symptoms, we point them out, we say, hey, look at that, something is wrong there. And we look at the core, and the core says, we lack love. And if we allow him to treat us, he will guide us into being more lovable, into being gracious, into being kind into being and understanding what love is and that treatment is not a quick fit not a quick fix it requires changing the band-aid it requires applying the medicine it requires not lying down in that position meaning it it requires us paying attention to the wound the issue and treating with it as it comes, little by little. When that urge comes for you to be selfish, you remind yourself, I'm no longer being selfish. I'm no longer that way. I am moving away from this. And so in order to be selfless, you apply selfless acts. So you give a little bit more. You realize that you're hoarding things, share with others. Get up and make a meal and carry it. Don't hold back. Don't use, the, don't use the cheapest of ingredients. Don't hold back the meat because you don't want to buy it. Meat is for you. But give. Give. So buy it. Make a best meal like if it's Christmas. And take every last drop of it and go and give it away to people who need it. Try it. Do it often. This is the healing. This is God guiding us, pointing out the issues and helping us to heal from each one of them. Because each is a wound. Each one of them is a wound that cuts us deep and destroys us. And if we don't treat with it, it can get seriously infected and cause us to die. Worse than dying physically is to die spiritually. Nowhere to go. No time with Jesus. No room for blessings. No achieving or receiving his best. None of that. Just damnation. Just darkness. Just a fiery pit. Yeah. Two ways to die. We don't need to go there. And so let's, let's, let's stop procrastinating. Let's stop avoiding. Let's go to see the great physician who is here. Allow him to treat you. Allow him take the medication he offers. That is his love. Apply it. Apply it to yourself and to everyone around you. Use it, engage it, and see yourself be the best you that you can be. Amen.
And so now let us confess our faith in the great physician using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold us, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from our sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, you have bidden light to shine out of darkness and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may share as lights in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite us to offer our own petitions at this time. Almighty God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray you, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a wonderful week, everyone. God bless you.